This next game will be very interesting to you. Kenneth Ray Smith was born September 13, 1930. He passed away February 4, 1999. He would go on to become a Fide Master. He wrote nine books on the opening that bears his name. You know that opening? It's the Smith Mora Gambit. Now, he didn't learn to play chess till he was 19 years old, and he learned while recuperating from a football injury. He published Chess Digest magazine, and he became Bobby Fischer's, one of Bobby Fischer's official assistants in his 1972 World Championship match. And this Haas has won more than 200 chess tournaments, including nine Texas State Championships, nine Southwest Open Championships, and he went over and won the British Major Open, and he went down and won the Mexican Chess Championship in 1963. He was also a world-class poker player, finishing as high as fourth place in the main event at the World Series of Poker. Smith actually only played the Smith Mora Gambit that I could find three times, and it was all three times in the same tournament. But as I was um, filtering through his games against the Sicilian defense, it seems that he played quite a variety of lines against the Sicilian, including Alapines. But the only record I could find of him playing the so-called Smith Mora Gambit and I say so-called because it had been previously known as Tartikover's Gambit, and then it came to be known as Mora's Gambit, but uh, Ken Smith played it three times at the San Antonio International Open in 1972, and he lost all three times, once against Donald Byrne, once against Larry Evans, and once against Enrique Mecking. Of course, you could play any opening against Mecking and lose. And those other two guys weren't too bad either, were they? Now, back in 1972, obviously, it was still known as Morris Gambit. And I took out my handy-dandy Oxford Companion of Chess. And this was published in 1984. And in the back, it has an index of chess openings, and in that index of chess openings, in 1984, this was still known as Morris Gambit. So I do not know when the Smith was added to the front end of the smith Mora Gambit. If you know, please tell me. But he only played it those three times, and the next time that we have him playing against the Sicilian, it was a Scheveningen. He did not play his so-called Gambit. So that's the story, but that's who this Ken Smith is. All right, so we do not have a Smith Mora Gambit. Instead, after c5, we have knight f3, d6, d4, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, an open Sicilian. Knight f6 here, knight c3, and of course, Nidorf's variation. Bishop to g5, pawn e6, queen d2, pawn h6, interrogating the bishop. Bishop back to e3, knight g4, bishop e2, and knight takes bishop on e3. And hopefully it's obvious that you do not want to capture with this pawn right? You don't want to isolate and double these pawns in the center. So queen takes the knight. Bishop e7, pawn f4, queen c7, pawn f5. Before pushing f5, he should castle one way or the other. Probably best to queenside castle here. It certainly would be more principled to queenside castle. The bot agrees. Bobby castles and bishop g4. Now the bot calling for kingside castles. 
H4 also seems to be, in my mind, a thematic move to maintain an equal game. I get a thumbs up for this move. But bishop g4, knight c6, the knight takes the knight, and the pawn takes the knight. Now smith castles, don't play pawn takes pawn here. On pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn, bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop. Therefore, you cannot castle kingside because it's illegal. And, uh, of course, as you know, an ill eagle is a sick bird. Do not move like a sick bird. And you cannot castle queenside because then you will be skewered or pinned if you prefer. A pin is a type of skewer. So, kingside castles right here, best move. Bishop g5 hits the queen nonetheless, but no pin slash skewer, queen f2. Rook b8, putting the question to the b-man, and that question is answered in the form of a defensive move, queen's rook to b1. Pawn d5 striking the center. F-man takes the e-man, and the bishop takes. Bishop f3, now queen e5. And now there's a pretty strong threat of f5. And this pawn, as you can see, cannot take in either direction because that would open the e3 square under the defensive protection of the queen, and that would pin the queen to the king. So queen c5 was played here. Now he still can't take either direction because the fork is as good as the pin, isn't it? Well, Bobby went ahead and played bishop f4 here battery attacking the h-man and that's definitely stronger than a move like f5 in this case i just mentioned the value of f5 but now f5 is actually not so good well what would white do he'll take this rook and now come over to e1 and even though you have something like bishop d2 here hitting the rook, the rook can then come to e2, and then you'd have to take the, the knight, and white is uh, just fine here. He's at least Oklahoma in Oklahoma City. And if I take this pawn, he actually has a nifty little move. Rook takes the pawn. I get an X glam for that. That hits the queen. You say, well, wait a minute. I can just take that with my pawn. No, you can't. There's a queen there pinning the pawn to the queen. So um, F5 is the wrong way to go, isn't it? So Bishop F4 was tried. And of course, G3 repels that attack. Now here, Bobby completely ignores the attack on his bishop and discovers an attack on the white queen, simultaneously attacking the knight. So that queen has to trade itself off, making way for the bishop to retreat to safety. But now white has time to save his knight, and he decides to save it by moving to a4, keeping it pretty active. Bishop takes the A-man with a hit on the rook. He moves his rook to E1. Bobby plays rook to B4, hitting the knight, which now plays to C5. And now Bobby chose to capture the pawn. He probably should have played bishop C4 first, hitting this rook. The bot agrees. It's a better approach to first hit the rook, and white would probably interpose with his knight in that line and make you just decide whether or not to trade your bishop for the knight. But of course, if you trade the bishop for the knight, 
then you've helped him to connect and uh, de-isolate his formerly isolated pawn. But you do pick up the B-man, and you've got a passer here. So for that reason, the bot, the eval bar, favors black very slightly. Let's come all the way back now and note that Bobby played rook takes b2. Knight d3 hits the rook. Rook back to b5. Rook a1, skewering the bishop and the a man. Bishop to e6, rook takes the a man, attacking the c man now. Rook c8 defends, bishop e2, preparing to attack the rook by discovery. G6 was played. G5 would be slightly more aggressive, wouldn't it? Yep, the bot agrees. G5, and after the discovered attack, then you'd have to play, what, rook b2 again, I suppose? Okay, rook b7, the bot says. Well, G6 was played, and rook e1. Yeah, rook f a1 certainly makes sense. Uh, but to be honest, I was actually thinking about retreating this rook to a4. I get a star for this. Anyway, rook e1 was played, and bishop h3. That gets a double question mark. I'm not sure why it warrants a double question mark. G5? is the best move apparently according to the bot i thought maybe bishop d7 was the way to go uh because then that let me put it on the board my idea was bishop to d7 uh and i was about to say so that you could play bishop b8 but the bot says play that straight away but my point was on bishop d7, let's say he plays knight f2. I retreat my rook to b8, and I'm ready to... Well, I guess I'm just full of Bologna, and none of it seems to work after all. Bishop h3. I guess I'm not seeing exactly why this is a blunder after all. Oh, because he can play g4? Ah, uh, yeah, because white can play g4 and kind of um, cut off my bishop and put me out of play. It's not what he played, but he could play that. Or maybe knight f2. Yeah, he should play knight f2. That's it. He should play knight f2 and just hit the bishop. But he didn't play that either. He played rook d1. Yep, the bot agrees. Knight f2. Although it would be, maybe I can actually, I got a slick little move here where I can vacate d4 for my bishop and hit his bishop. And, you know, his bishop's on, on priest, so if he takes, now I've got bishop d4. Anyway, rook d1 was played. The eval bar is essentially dead center, so I'm still not sure why this gets the big, big red X. But Bobby decided to retreat his bishop to e6 here, knight f4. Yeah, no, knight f4, actually here, I would play knight takes bishop, because that removes the defender of the pawn, discovers an attack on the pawn, and wins the pawn. Right? So knight takes bishop, rook takes knight, and rook takes pawn. And I get a star for that. Knight f4. Now that does get an understandable red X. Missed his chance to win a pawn. Rook c5. Getting, getting a red X of his own. Okay. I like rook c5. And I was thinking rook c5 and then I'm ready to capture the knight. But I suppose the point is... He can take my other bishop, and then I don't have the chance 
to play bishop takes knight. And he did and got an x glove. Pawn takes knight, bishop d3, holds the pawn. King f7, rook a7 check, rook c7, rook takes rook, and bishop takes rook, and we go into the end game, rook, ver rook bishop versus rook bishop. Opposite colored bishops, black has one extra pawn, it's not going to be enough. You could almost call a draw right here. They did play on quite a few moves, but this is already looking like a draw, isn't it? Rook a1, king e7, and I don't know if king f6 might be more in order because it's more toward the center. It, it, gets, it gets a check mark, and the arrow indicates rook e7. If king f6, rook a4, and king e5. was in my mind but the bot says the, the funny thing is when bobby makes the move indicated by the bot the bot now indicates another move fickle bot well here rook a4 and pawn e5 but well, bishop e5 does seem to be a better way to defend this pawn so as not to um, lock in your bishop but he played e5 i like bishop e5 get a star. No doubt white will get his king involved, and then you keep moving your king to a better place as well. Bobby with e5 gets the frown from the bot. King g2, king d6. And it might not seem like it matters, but king e6 is a little bit more complex. And first of all, you don't want to be on light squares because he has a light squared bishop. And after here, then maybe I'll pin that bishop. But, I mean, things can get a little bit complicated here. You could just play bishop a5 here, and, you know, your draw is still very well secure or rook takes rook and and then that's pretty much a guaranteed draw as well anyway king d6 king f3 rook a5 offering the trade apparently rook c3 is better but the trade is accepted we go into a bishop versus bishop opposite colored bishop ending this will surely be drawn it's just a matter of when they decide to offer, when one decides to offer the other a draw. King e2, king c5, bishop a6, king b4, king d3, king a3. I mean, I don't know. I On principle, you do want to get your pieces on dark squares, so g5 would be... Worth considering, of course. Or c5, get it on a dark. Uh, g4. He's doing the same. He's getting his pieces on light squares. So, I mean, even king c4 can be considered here. But g4, g5, and that gets, it's almost over here. Bishop b7 c5 bishop c6 king b2 well actually here c4 would win now that was slick this is still he, bobby's still pushing for a win c4 check will win won't it because after takes takes and now my king is going to escort my pawn so Smith defends his pawn. King c1. Now king c4. King d2. Interesting. He just gives up his pawn. King takes the pawn. King e3. King d5. Bishop c7. 
And here they agreed to a draw. 51 moves. And white had an accuracy of 91.5. Black had an accuracy of 91.8. <laughs> Both players scored a single game rating of 25.50. So we see we see this from Bobby game after game after game. And I said it weeks ago, his rating has not caught up to his skill level. His skill level is improving faster than his rating is improving. 